which was built in 1966 by Geoffrey Newey, who was a third generation clockmaker in York. He followed his, his father's footsteps and his grandfather's footsteps, and they were a, a 20th century York dynasty. Um, the clock has a double three-legged gravity escapement, which was invented um, for Big Ben by Lord Grimthorpe, uh, and, and quickly adopted by the Newey family, um, with, with a few perfections, as they like to call them, uh, on Grant Grimthorpe's original design. Um, the whole clock was designed and made by Geoffrey Newey, the third generation, um, and it was actually designed with space for a third train. It has two, two active trains, and the third train was never fitted. Um, the clock strikes the hour on the hour, and now, after the refurbishment, there is an electronic timing, chiming um, on, on, on the new peal of bells. This is Lord Grimthorpe's gravity escapement, which was redesigned slightly by the Newies, um, which has been ticking away since 1966, except for the last ten months when the clock has been away for restoration. Um, the clock strikes on the hour and right now if you wish I could give you a demonstration which would involve lifting this lever and it's going to strike 11. Um, the, the fan at the back controls the speed of the striking and when the striking is over you hear a loud clicking as it slows down. So I'll lift the lever with it striking and The clock is probably, if not the last, one of the last public clocks to be built in the country on the design which had prevailed for, for most of the, uh, the 20th century in being weight driven uh, mechanical clock wound by hand and using a, a large pendulum which is, um, which is visible there and has swung in this tower for the last 40 years with more or less without a break. Um, being built only in 1966, which is, is modern for a mechanical clock, we're fortunate in still having the, the pattern for the bed frame. This is the wooden pattern from which the, um, the casting for the bed frame was made. It's only been used the once to make this clock um, and, well, we were fortunate in still having it intact to, uh, to, to, to now display alongside the clock. There are, uh, are the, the winding barrel and the main wheel of what would have been the, um, the chiming train were it fitted when the clock was made in 1966. There are other small wheels that we have associated with this third train uh, but the, the church at the time didn't feel that they could rise to the, the, um, the necessary bells and the cost of the extra mechanism. But um, maybe one day somebody will look at that and think, yes, we'll. Having got the, um, the main wheel and the barrel for the, what was envisaged to be the, the chiming train, which would, have, which would have gone in the frame here, um, they're going to be kept up here so that in in what I call more enlightened times, maybe um, someone will say, well, we ought to finish this off as it was intended, as a three-train striking and chiming clock. The clock needs winding once a week, 
and on each train, each side, the time side and the striking side, is 125 turns and it's done once a week. Since it was built, Geoffrey Newey um, has ran this clock weekly, so there's a calculation as to how many times he's been up here and done it. 52 weeks a year for uh, over 40 years. Since Geoffrey Newey's retirement last year, um, the winding has been taken over by a recently formed York Clock Group, which consists of four people who have an interest in keeping the clocks of York running and keeping good time. Um, there are currently 11 public clocks similar to this that we wind on a, on a weekly basis um, in, in churches, offices and, uh, and municipal buildings in York. Um, it's the four people do it on a regular rotor so everybody is able to be familiar with all the clocks and being four of us it does enable people to have holidays and breaks from their, their routine. Fifty years ago, I first came to York as a tourist, like lots of other folks. And one of the first streets I walked along was Coney Street below us here. Always busy with people and traffic. So when I was invited to do the St Martin's Quarters, I had in mind all the busy footsteps in the street. So these tunes here represent the strides of the tourists and the locals going about their daily business. So the, the tunes of the quarters and the halves and the three quarters, they stride about the eight bells of the octave in the tower here. body of, uh, uh, well, the York Clock Group. Um, there's Andrew Carter and Edward Bacon. And Andrew Higston from the church. Uh, you must be delighted, Andrew, to have your clock back. I am indeed. It's been ten long months while it's been away. We had a busy day yesterday morning. Some of us were here at half past five, and uh, mostly the work is now done. The clock is back, the Admiral is back, and we're very much looking forward to seeing it working fully, as we hope it will very shortly. Now, as, as York people through and through, everyone knows what, what the Admiral is, but for those in North Yorkshire who are not too sure of, of what we're talking about when we say the Admiral's back, he's, he's the figure that stands on top of the Coney Street clock. And uh, you'd, have seen, you'd, have, you'd have seen a lot of these back in, what, in Dickens' time, wouldn't you? Yes, indeed. They turn out to be quite common figures. But ours is the only one to be on a clock and the only one that ever revolved. And indeed, it's the oldest known. It was put here in 1779, and we've had it, loved it ever since. So, has it always revolved? Because I don't remember it revolving. No, we believe it was originally installed to revolve, and sometime early in the 19th century, it stopped, and hasn't done so since. But it will now? Yes, the idea was that it should follow the sun. So it would revolve every 24 hours. Oh, so he's, he doesn't sort of, uh, it doesn't go around when it chimes. It's not one of those type of things. Well, the added refinement now <laughs> is that he will revolve on the hour. <laughs> so he revolves both once a day, through the day, and he does a little pirouette on the hour. And, and if you're wondering why you've never heard the chimes before, the, the, the chimes actually disappeared back in 1966, I think, wasn't it? Well, the chimes themselves, which is the noise that the clock makes on the quarter hour, and, and most of us are very familiar that, with that from uh, Big Ben, uh, they were destroyed in the fire in 1942. Uh, 
they were never installed in 1966. That would, people hoped that they could be, but sadly... So it's my clock terminology going wrong then. The striking then. So with the bells that... Uh, I've never heard it strike. And, and the reason for that... <laughs> well, um, that's a rather nice story because that bit was reinstalled. <laughs> Um, but sadly, it was then very quickly disconnected because it kept the night watchman awake. He lived in a little flat in the press works, which many of us will remember behind the church, and uh, it kept him awake during the day. <laughs> so the night watchman complained, and the bell stopped. And the bell stopped. Uh, also here, uh, as I said, from York Clock Group. Now, if you're not familiar with York Clock Group, uh, they have a, a very important job to do because, um, well, they are wind-up merchants. They, they really do go around uh, uh, making sure that the clocks in, in York, well, some of them uh, continue. Edward Bacon, who runs it, and Andrew Carter uh, is here. More on Andrew in a moment. But, Edward, just, uh, just tell me briefly. Oh, there we are. Isn't that lovely? So tell me about uh, the clock group then, Edward. Well, um, as, as many people will know, in, for the last century, um, most of the last century, there was one family of clockmakers and clockwinders in York. Well, Mr. Mr. Newey, that, wasn't it? It was the third generation, Geoffrey Newey. And he has taken, I suppose, what you could call late retirement. In, in his 80s, he decided that, uh, that the time had come when... He was no longer going to wind. So you've taken up from him. And that's where, that's where Andrew and the, the rest Andrew, of the team you've, come in. You've composed the chimes that we will hear eventually, haven't you? Yes. So you can it. hear them now if you want me to sing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, then finish with you singing then, Andrew. Go la, la, la. 